Good evening. I, uh, I'm Dan Forey, the Chief Operating Officer here at Hempfield, and I'm going to spend some time looking at the facility study that we did and just talk a little bit about where we're at and, and what goes on in the district. Um, one of the things that people don't realize is um, we have a pretty expansive facility across the uh, seven elementary schools, two middle schools, and the high school. Um, the, uh, every year we go through an annual audit. Uh, at this point in time, the, uh, the assets, the total cost of the assets are over $218 million. Um, the land itself is $4.7 million. Um, and, and one of the things you see, like we said, there's 11 buildings, 11 schools, 13 buildings. Uh, we have nearly 1.5 million square feet of floor space. Um, and so as people look at things and you go, hey, well, you just did that, you just did, well, yeah, because there's 1.5 million square feet, uh, we're going to continue having things that we're renovating, updating. Um, so what we did last summer, uh, actually summer of 2015, uh, as we had finished up the construction of the three middle schools, so Landisville Intermediate Center, Farmdale and East Petersburg over the last couple of years. We had finished the tech and the alternative school here next to the administration building. And so we wanted to go back and look at what are the condition of some of the older buildings. So right now we're in the high school, which is, is our oldest building, was last renovated in 94-95 uh, time frame. You know, what does it look like? What is, what's the condition? What's in the condition of the systems? You know, the heating and the ventilating, the piping, the electrical switch gears, things like that. Um, so we brought an engineering firm in, uh, and what we did is we had used a, a firm before in the commissioning or the, the testing of the new buildings. Uh, we brought them in, they do this service uh, for a couple reasons. One, we were pleased with what they did in the commissioning, but two, they, if we do a project, they wouldn't be the local ones that would do the design. And so that way, uh, to make sure that the board understood that, you know, they had no vested interest to say, hey, your buildings need worked on. Oh, by the way, we'll be glad to put the packages together. You know, and so we tried to keep that separation. Uh, so they looked at the um, architectural, they looked at uh, heating and ventilating. Uh, they looked at electrical, they talked about plumbing, site. They looked at code. One of the things that people don't recognize or realize is that um, so when this building was last renovated in 94, 95, it was brought up to the code at the time. Um, and the way code works is the next time you renovate a building, then you have to bring everything up to that code from that time. So it's, you don't have to go back and fix things in the middle, but once you go ahead and start to look at them again, then you know, what's changed? And so uh, you know, to give us an update of what, what code things have changed. Uh, I talked about the high school already. We looked at the high school LMS LPC, uh, which were all three LMS and LPC were actually built in 94, 95. High school was renovated then. Um, we also looked at the uh, district administrative office, uh, which was uh, done in the early 90s, and Centerville Middle School on a couple of things that was done in the early 2000s. Uh, one of the nice things that came out of the report was that the buildings are very well maintained. Um, and uh, from a custodial maintenance staff, they do a nice job. Uh, and, and that's good and bad and that, hey, it's good and so keeps things up to date. But also it, it leaves it like, oh, everything must be fine. That building looks great. Well, then it's looking at the, the systems behind that. Um, so the goal of the study was really to try and make sure that we could, uh, you know, what could we do and what could we identify so that we didn't have to do a full, full uh, building renovation. Um, right now, Penn Manor is working on their high school. Uh, they're going to do a renovation. Uh, it's about $87 million. It's a smaller building than this. And so if we had to go to a full-scale renovation in this building, you're looking at $100 million uh, project, probably over three or four years, um, and significantly impacting the education during that time where you have kids here, there, everywhere, uh, and construction going on. So we want to try and look at, hey, what can we do mechanically, electrically, pummeling-wise to make sure that everything's going to function for the next number of years, uh, but also try and stay away from that wholesale renovation. Um, so the six buildings we looked at are about 700,000 square feet. Um, what they did is they went through and they identified 300 different projects and some of them were small, some of them were large, uh, uh, across all those, and then laid out some priorities depending on the condition. And so the first thing they looked at was priority, three, priority one, uh, which was looking at a proposed a, a three-year time frame. So, hey, this is what needs to be done. Here's where you're at. Um, then they went priority two, three to five, and then priority three, uh, 
beyond five. And it talks about deferrable, but the reality is, is you're probably still five to, to eight that some of that has to look at. And, and so trying to understand that, I mean, one of the things are is the roofing systems. So the roofing systems are now 25, almost 25 years old. If you don't maintain the roofing system, then things start to degrade into the building and now I have more work to do. And so what's that done uh, and what are the, the possibilities there? So they went through, identified those, and they identified about $21 million uh, worth of needs over those three priorities. And so you can see, uh, you know, it's pretty evenly split amongst the three. Um, when you start and talk about it, wow, that's $21 million, that's a lot. Uh, when you go back and like we talked about, you know, renovation of this high school is 100 million, so well now I'm, I'm one fifth of what I was trying to do. Uh, and this also included the middle school and the uh, Landisville Primary Center. And so there's some, uh, some real opportunities there um, to try and keep things maintained, but at the same time uh, do it without disrupting and, uh, and moving things along. So it's interesting because we're here in the high school tonight. Um, one of the things that we've been doing over the last couple summers uh, is we've gone through, because this is uh, you know, an over 20 year old building, we've gone through, we replaced the floors, we replaced ceiling tiles, we put some paint on the walls, we put whiteboards up. When this was renovated in 94, 95, it was all blackboards. Um, and so now that we have the technology and you're using the one-to-one -one and things like that, we, we pulled blackboards out and put whiteboards in. And so a lot of that stuff, we can knock off 20, 30 rooms in a summer no impact to the education in a three-year time frame. We got through the whole high school and, and those things, and, and now we're, we're bringing things up and allowing that to happen. Um, the uh, tech department has worked on the one-to-one -one infrastructure. They made sure that we have enough uh, Wi-Fi support. We have enough infrastructure to support. Uh, next year, we're going to roll out, and we're going to have 2,400 kids in this building all on Wi-Fi at the same time. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but in my house, that doesn't look good. Uh, and so we need to make sure that that's possible and that we're doing that. And so most of that got finished last summer as well. Um, we also uh, changed out the heating system in the main Buchanan gym. That had not been changed 20 years ago. So it actually was a 40 year old electric heating system that we upgraded. We brought it to natural gas steam um, and, and that should have a, a five year or less payback uh, just on the conversion. And so now we have a new up to date system, a lot more efficient and and it's going to pay off in the experience. So we're trying, those are some of the things we looked at. We also converted this summer Centerville Middle School uh, to natural gas from electric. Uh, when it was last renovated, natural gas wasn't there. And so we, uh, we ha were able to work with UGI over the last couple of years, natural gas is there. And so that's another five to seven year payback just on that conversion. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's assuming electric rates stay in natural gas and all those sort of things. Um, we looked at and we've been working on some uh, heating unit uh, equipment repairs uh, and, and a lot of that was looking at you know stuff that's on the rooftops, stuff that's in the classrooms, making sure it's clean, deep cleaning, making sure that you know that everything's sealed, uh, that we're preventing moisture from coming in it so that we can get another 10 to 15 years out of those systems. Because things start to break down, just like we talked about the roof, that's when I start to have to replace the whole system. And so because we're not intended on renovating the whole building, what can we do to main, maintain those systems to push it out another 10 to 15 years? Uh, so we started working through that. Uh, we we uh, do have a couple of things ongoing. Uh, we want to put some restrooms and some storage out at the stadium. Uh, one of the things we have, um, we have some limited restroom facilities out there, but uh, particularly between the, the quad field, which is next to the stadium and the stadium, they're getting used almost year round. And right now, none of our facilities our year-round facilities from a heating, so we need to shut them down and we put porta potties out while it's uh, out there. The other thing is, is none of them are compliant from an ADA standpoint. They were compliant with what they needed to do at the time, but those standards don't, don't uh, meet anymore. And so one of the things that we wanted to look at is make sure that we'd have some facilities. It's not a lot of facilities, but we'd add them on um, to 1B ADA compliant to have year-round heat in it that it could be used. And then also what we have did is, uh, as we talked to some of the board members, we put uh, family restrooms on the outside too, is, uh, so that if someone's bringing children to the game, they don't have to worry about, well, where am I taking them out? So we put some family, a family restroom on each side of that as well. Um, 
The, uh, we did two years ago, the stadium re-turfed that. Uh, it had reached its life cycle. We're looking at the uh, quad field, which will, will be 10 years next summer. We'll look at whether that's either this summer or next summer. Um, we're also looking as we're moving along these projects, you know, what does the building automation look like? Are we controlling things? You know, are our lights on sensors? Are our systems on sensors? How are we minimizing our electrical loads throughout the time that we need it? Uh, security is obviously a big thing as things have changed, even, you know, even over the last five to ten years. Um, you know, what kind of camera coverage we would have, what's the ability to, to, to look at those things and how that uh, looks like. So one of the things, though, that we looked at and we said, okay, well, that study, that, that takes us out eight to ten years. Well, where does that bring us? Well, that brings us to 2024, 2026. Well, it's going to be an ongoing process because Centerville Elementary School was built in 2002, and so 2024, it will be 22 years since the renovation. Mountville and Roarstown were built in 2003, 2004. There's another 20 years. And so part of it just trying to keep uh, continuing to look at is with that 1.5 million square feet, we're almost always going to be in some phase, some issue going on, some updates. And so I think looking forward to over the next couple of years as we do some of these project improvements, you know, can we start to do that model to, to move things along? One of the things that's always a wild card is enrollment. Um, we are, uh, the state projects where enrollment is and we're actually below what the state has projected. Um, things really flattened out in, in 07, 08 as the economy turned and really our district-wide enrollment has stayed pretty flat at just under 7,000. Um, some of the projections before that when things were building they had expected us up to be up to 7,500 or higher at this point in time and so who knows as things turn you know it, it doesn't take long for enrollment to turn um, and and then we need to find out where we're putting those kids and so that's always something to to be keeping on the on the forefront. Questions? Questions. Yeah, I was going to ask about the enrollment part. With the, uh, how, how much capacity are you probably having at the high school? And how much, without expanding it, we, how much more would you have? We've had as many as 2,500, 2,600 in here. It obviously starts to get tight, and, and part of it then is just making sure that, hey, are we are we fully, fully utilizing classrooms? And so I think right now we try to make sure that there's at least 15 in a class, but as your enrollment starts to go up, then you start to look at some of those thresholds and say, hey, I can't afford to have only 15 in a class. We're gonna have to, to look at where that's at. And that's part of uh, installing the modular units out in front the other year to try and give some capacity. At that point in time, we had a lot of teachers that were teaching in multiple classrooms and just jockeying around. And so that gave us a little bit more uh, in that in that way um, you know and the question we're looking at too is uh, we've done some things with some online learning um, and, and you know does that help and, and does that become uh, you know a model that helps to alleviate some of those concerns you know one of the things that we had looked at and um, I, I can't foresee um, an option that really expands this high school again uh, it, it's 500 square thousand square feet now uh, it's big when you go from one end to the other uh, you know um, you know so one of the things we talked about is hey if that continued to grow and you projected you know did you need to build need to pull the ninth graders out well if you need to pull the ninth graders out you're looking at a probably a, a 30 million dollar project to put another school up and so you know what can we do and how can we work through those constraints to try and minimize that now we do have we have capacity probably the high school's the tightest right now there are capacity at the at the elementary schools as we went through realignment the other year, and we and we we have a great relationship with the municipalities. Um, they they talk to us about hey this is this property could be developed here this could be developed and so that helped us to try and forecast some of that out and say hey we need to shift things around in Roarstown and Landisville areas because there's a lot of potential growth there and so how do we make that happen? You look at Mountville, it's pretty well built out. And so there's not a lot that's going to occur there. And so it's one of our larger schools right now, but it's going to be pretty stable. And so those are the type of things that we try and look out at. Um, you know, and one of the things that was interesting, I, I was talking to some friends um, this weekend that are in Michigan. And, in, and at least where they're at in Michigan, it's, 
it's an open enrollment. You can go to whichever school you want to. Now you have to transport if it's outside of your attendance area, but you know, they're just talking about the challenges of not knowing, you know, so now you're trying to forecast your own population, but then who might decide they want to, you know, come to your school and how do you fit everybody in and what does that look like? And so, you know, I think we're fortunate right now with, with a system given the, some stability there. Any other questions? Were the, are the portables essentially staying at this point? I They're staying at this point. Um, I didn't know if that was a conditional. They, what the township had asked was after five years to let us know, you know, do, what was our intent. You know, uh, we're going to do some work. We're going to put some, uh, do a little bit more work on those and continue to, to utilize those. They're, they're working out and helping some of that, you know, some of that area out in there. So we'll see where there's no plan to take them down at this point. And, and one of the difficult things is even like, uh, even the installation of a portable classroom really ha has to be done to a permanent standard. Um, and so it, it's not a, hey, pick it up, move it. I, I was talking to uh, a superintendent that they're in the middle of a high school project. They really are using temporary classrooms for two years. And they had to go through and they had to hook up the water and they had to hook up the fire alarms and the announcements and the telephone system and you know all those things had to be you know put together and like yeah but we're two years they're going away no nah, i'll get all up um so okay like i said thanks for coming out